special edition. One star. One teenager. One love. One Brittany. Okay, I'm inside Wembley Arena. Behind me is the stage Britney Spears will be performing on. She'll be coming on in, oh, just a couple of hours. The place is empty right now. I'm gonna go back to it right now, see what I can find. With Britney Spears. We are inside Britney Spears' dressing room backstage at Wembley Arena. I know! Check it out! What is she like? She's got her bag of crisps here, a little stereo sound system. Come, come. It's very, very big. It's spacious in here. It's bigger than my flat, this dressing room. Nice little, like, comfy sofas here. Little cuddly bear here. Another cuddly bear. Little, I don't know what these are. The little stones. I don't know these stones are written trust, love, joy, laugh, and faith. The whole thing is just... Brittany. Brittany, welcome to England. Well, thank you. Now, it's it's your, actually your first big tour here in England. Yes, what it is. took you so long to get here? <gasps> well, I had to tour the um, States first, mm -hmm. you know, the U.S. first. And then I've been looking forward to this all year, seriously, because I've toured the U.S. So, like, this, that was my third time to tour there. Right. So how long are you going to be away from home this time around? This seven is the weeks. longest time. I mean, well, I've been away, you know, gone, like, for seven weeks at a time. But, like, at each little, like, every other weekend, I would, like, try and fly home, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm just going to be the longest. I haven't, I'm not going to be able to go home at all. What do you take to make it more comfortable in those seven weeks? Well, to remind you of home. Well, really, um, Felicia, my assistant, she comes mm -hmm. with me and she fixes me the um, General Foods coffee. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but that makes me feel so cozy inside. She thinks I'm the only person that can do it, so I call it job security. She just calls it yummy coffee. And um, I have a stuffed animal I bring with me. I have my um, my journal that I write in right. every night. And, um, you know, just all my, my fun sweats and my PJs make me feel cozy and candles do too. Yeah. So just now have we... that homey feel, you know. Because we actually sneaked a peek in your dressing room when you weren't there. Sorry about that. That's oh, okay. And, it's cozy, uh, right? It is cozy. All lots of candles and stuff. Yeah. And then, and it's very. It felt very zen and calming. Yeah. Is that what, I'm all about that. Yeah. What do you do right before the show? Like the last hour before the show? Well, usually like the whole day right before the show, I have to be really mellow because my show is crazy. Mm -hmm. I'll usually get a massage. And nice. then I'll do hair and makeup, and then I say a prayer right before we go on stage with the band and the dancers and all of us, just to make us feel better about things. You Big know? team huddle. Yeah. What's going on in your head the second before you, the lights go on when you're on stage? I get really excited, you know, I'm like, oh my god, you know. When you utter the last note of, your, uh, of the last set of the concert, What's going on in your mind then? I'm thinking about my bed. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Straight from a huge concert with thousands of people watching, she gets into a bus and drinks chamomile tea instead of like going to a big rock and roll party and being a pop star. She doesn't do that. No, no big rock and roll parties to be a pop star. Oh. Well. <laughs> now when hit hit me, baby, one more time. First went big. And the Britney fever started. Do you have any idea that it would escalate to that kind of level? No. This kind of level? No. no I don't think you ever expect anything. You know, you hope and you dream. Mm. You know, I always do that. And my dreams are, like, ridiculous. You know, I have so many goals and so many dreams. But you never expect them to happen, you know? Okay. This is Rob. Now, Rob, tell everybody at home what you do. Uh, I'm the head of security for Britney Spears. Um, I'm responsible for her safety and security. And, uh... And make sure that she's well and having a good time. So you're the main man. If anyone who wants to get through her, they got to get through you first. Basically, yes. Okay, now, lots of people try and get through to see Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. What are the, like, the worst excuses that you've heard of, of people trying to blag their oh, way to They're their long-lost cousin or their, you know, nephew or they try to come back and say that I'm sick or whatever. You know, this is different things. They just try all kinds of stuff. Not even tears move you. No. no. It's a hard man, Rob, is it? Thanks, okay. Rob. No problem. Good well, luck. Right. Not that he'll need it. <laughs> it's still early in your career, but it's been concentrated success, kind of. Uh, what's been the highlight so far? Usually award shows are really fun, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a time where all, all the celebrities come together and you just, you know, it's just cool and you honor each other, you know. It's, it's really, really cool. But this past year, my highlights have really just spending time with my family and the people that you love. Do any of the awards in particular stand out or special to you? Um, 
Well, definitely the MTV Europe Awards. Mm -hmm. that, that was so much fun for me. That it was, was a really, really good show. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I had a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know. I think the award shows over here, they're just, they're more of, of a relaxed environment. It's just like whatever goes, and you're just there, and you're just there to have fun. It's not so like, mm -hmm. like this all the time. It's really stuffy, you know, yeah. the ones, the other ones. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I partied hard. It was cool. Which famous people have you met, which have been your kind of inspiration since you were a kid? Um, Actually, at the MTV Year Awards, I met um, Whitney Houston. Baby, I, I was walking around the dressing room area, and I had my shoes off, just like a total dork, you know. Like a regular person. Oh, yeah, dork. you know. Yeah. And uh, so then the security was like, would you like to come in here and meet her? I was like, oh. So I walk in, like, oh, oh my God. Whitney. You know what to say, man. I was like, you know, it's Whitney Houston. Like, this is some girl I listened yeah. to all my life. She's my idol. And she was really nice, you know, that's really cool when you look up to someone and you meet them and they're not only talented, but they're nice. I learned from the best, I learned from you. What did she say to you? Any words of wisdom like Yoda? Um, she was just like, it's really, really, actually, she acted like really genuinely happy to meet me too, mm -hmm. so it was really kind of weird. She's like, it's so nice to meet you, and da 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 and I was like, well, it's really cool to meet you too. <laughs> Because I saw you at the MTV Video Music Awards in New York. Yeah. And you did it with Christina Aguilera, which I think was a surprise to everybody. What was that like? It was cool. Yeah? It was cool. Yeah, it was very cool. Actually, um, me and Christina, we used to be really good friends on the Mickey Mouse Club. We used to be really, really close. And it's cool, like, to, even after the award shows and stuff, we try to hook up and mm -hmm. hang out and stuff, you know? So it's just really nice to have other people out there the same age that understand what you're going yeah. through. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you just totally relate to each other. So how has all the fame and all media craziness affected your friends and your family? Well, really, it hasn't, um, it hasn't really affected them. I think they've handled it really, really well. And I mean, I have too, but it's just, you know, sometimes you don't have a personal life anymore. Everything's out in the open. At first it was hard for me, but now I've got to put where I've accepted it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way it is. But um, it's, a, it's a hard realization. Once you realize that you can't go back and you're famous, hello. Yeah. Is fame a bad word for you? Is it, is it a bad thing? I mean, there's good points to fame and there's bad points. You know, I'm here because of the music and mm -hmm. I love what I do. But if I could do this and not be famous, I would. <laughs> what is the, the weirdest place somebody's asked you for an autograph? Like, have they given you something bizarre to sign? Anything oh, Lordy, there's been, <laughs> there's no telling. Um, I've been in a bathroom before, mm -hmm. in a bathroom stall, and someone's like knocking on my bathroom door. Can I have an autograph? Tell us about Heart to Heart, the book. It's about me and my mom mm -hmm. and our relationship, and just talking about how it's just really important to, you know, have that communication with your mom. And, you know, I mean, of course, all teenagers, I think they go to that stage where whatever their mom says isn't cool, yeah. you know what I mean? Once you grow out of that, it's like, it's really weird because me and my mom, she's still my mom, but we're growing into a relationship now where it's like, we're like friends, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I'm coming into my own a little bit more, and that's cool. When did you decide to write that? What made you decide to write it? Um, really, uh, my mom came up with the idea. Mm -hmm and she told me about it and I was like yeah that's really really cool and there were some parts where we were together when we wrote the book but for the most part she was in Louisiana and I was on the road and we were both writing things and then when we came together and we looked at the you know I looked at the things that she wrote and I was like oh that's so sweet you know and she would do the same you know it was cool what's your favorite chapter from the book um my favorite chapter probably the last one it was just really sweet I wouldn't begin to guess what Brittany's future will hold I never underestimate my little girl. It's always been up to her, but what I pray is that whatever she does, it brings her happiness. I always tell her, Britt, I'm proud of you no matter what. If she gave it all up tomorrow and decided she wanted to raise 10 kids on a farm in Louisiana, I'd be proud of her. In fact, if she moved back home, I'd be thrilled. It's really cool. I would really love to do a film or something, just to experience something different and like a new challenge, mm -hmm. you know? And I think I only have 30 dates next year of touring, so that'd be fun. Any idea what kind of film you'd want to be in? Um, you know, where it's a, a film where I could play like a really different kind of character than, mm -hmm. you know, what I am right now. You know, just something so I could have fun with it and play up, play with it. And I would want to do like a teen movie, something where 
there's like you know a lot of drama but then yeah. there's like a there's a lot of emotion where you cry you laugh you just feel all that you know so it's gonna be fun see Britney Spears in yeah yeah I'll get your dressing room and, okay. and then I'll get ready and get ready and what are you doing you're always messing up everything you this, this, is this is our interview this is my interview this is her interview uh -huh. so <laughs> So what, what's it feel like touring with Britney Spears around the world? It's awesome. I'm really excited. Here. Awesome. It's really cool. <laughs> I told him to say that now. Go prepare your thing. This I am. This is you. This is me, man. Get your zen rest and good Just luck. Give me a hug. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you. Good luck.